Moving on to the next category, humanities. Our winner is a professor at the School of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Lal Nehru University. She's an alumnus of Punjab University and MS University in Baroda. She's published essays on secularism, on identities, on difficult histories, and historic painting. She's curated exhibitions in many museums around the world and edited many publications, including one that I found very interesting. It's called No Touching, No Spitting, No Praying. But to tell you more, it is my honor to introduce the winner of the 1998 Nobel Prize in Economics and a Bharat Ratna, Professor Amartya Sen. In 2011, Professor Sen was presented the National Medal of Arts and National Humanities by President Obama. His research ranges over social choice theory, economic theory, ethics, political philosophy, and public health. He is the Thomas W. Lamont University Professor and Professor of Economics and Philosophy at Harvard. Ladies and gentlemen, Professor Amartya Sen, Jury Chair for the Infosys Prize in Humanities. Friends, it is a wonderful opportunity to be here in the vestibule of this award to Professor Kavita Singh. And so I read the, the citation first. The Infosys Prize for 2018 for Humanities is awarded to Professor Kavita Singh, Professor and Dean, School of Arts and Aesthetics, Jawaharlal Nehru University, New Delhi, for her extraordinarily illuminating study of Mughal, Rajput, and Deccan art, as well as her insightful writing on the historical function and the role of museums and their significance in the increasingly fraught and conflicted social world in which visual culture exists today. So I begin by congratulating Kavita, if I may call her that. And she is a legendary scholar and a totally outstanding academic and professor whose fame is uh, well known across the world. Um, she has written on so many different subjects that it's not easy to capture all of that in a three-minute presentation. Her work on mogul art is, is, is totally part-waking, which uh, mogul art didn't drop from heaven. It, it, it had its background and it had its history. So from her work, we can see how it evolved, what evolved that Persian or European paintings might have added to the local base. Similarly, when she comes to Rajput paintings, the relation between the Rajput art generally, a, a relation between Mughal art and Rajput art, we get a kind of definitive story from her. And then again, she does the same for the Deccani art forms. And she applies it not only to painting and normal objects of art, but also to a variety of other areas which may or may not put in exactly the same category, including how the manuscripts are presented, her perfumes are bottled, a whole variety of subjects in which art comes into it. And as the citation mentions, museums is one of the things in which she had made us understand the importance thereof. I may take the opportunity here of noting that sometimes we overlook that some of the major achievements have been done in the world in which popular participation is very strong. For example, the fact that, in, that the Chinese have a population which is more museum going than any other population in the world is itself a factor in explaining many of the great things that have happened in the Chinese civilization. Kavita has drawn our attention to problems 
that we knew about and worried about and wondered about, and she has also drawn our attention to problems that we should worry about and wonder about. And we are deeply grateful, and it's a great privilege for me to be part of the celebratory act of giving Kavita Singh this year's Humanities Award. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Sen. And here is Professor Kavita Singh on her quest to understand art history in this video. One of the things that I hope to make possible is the translation of the cutting edge research in art history from English into other Indian languages. The other thing is also grooming another generation of scholars who will continue to be active in the field 30 or 40 years from now. My current work involves two different areas of art history. I'm interested in the history and the politics of the museum and the history of Indian painting traditions, particularly from the Mughal and the Rajput courts. It all began when I chanced upon a book called The Dance of Shiva, which took a sculpture and then brought perspectives of poetry, religion and history to bear on it. And I asked people, what is this field that this book belongs to? And then someone told me, oh, this is art history. And I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. Please join me in welcoming on stage, Professor Kavita Singh. May I request Mr. Narayan Murthy and Professor Sen to join us for the prize presentation. And Professor Bhargava to present the Infosys Prize in Humanities to Professor Kavita Singh. Thank you, Professor Sen. Thank you, Professor Bhargava. Thank you, Mr. Murthy. Professor, would you like to say a few words? Thank you very much. When I received the phone call informing me that the jury this year had done me the huge honor of choosing me for the Infosys Award, my reaction was one of pure disbelief. This is a huge honor, and it's one that I never imagined would come to someone like me for many reasons. One of the reasons being that I work in a discipline that is quite marginal in India. Art history doesn't deserve to be marginal. There can't be many regions in the world that have produced as much art as India has in its long history. And there are very few regions in the world that have as much of a crying need for art history and all that art history can do for its heritage. So I want to thank the Infosys Foundation for everything that they do, for being one of the rare institutions that has also put up this prestigious prize for the humanities. I want to thank the distinguished jury, and of course the esteemed jury chair from whose hands it's such an honor to receive this, for this wonderful award. And I gratefully receive it not just for myself, but also as a recognition for art history, which is a fascinating discipline in which I'm lucky enough to work. I have so many people to thank for their encouragement and their support in all of these years. And my first thoughts on the day that I got the phone call was for all the teachers and the mentors. And so I want to thank B.N. Goswami and Ratan Parimu and Gulam Sheikh and Ashok Das and Deborah Swallow and Vishaka Desai and Gerhard Wolf and Avinwam Shalin and Michael Ann Holly and Michael Conforti, who among others have taught me and they've given me opportunities and they've given me much needed mentorship but as I age, the tables are turning, and I find that I'm learning now more and more every day from my students. And so I want to thank my very brilliant research students who are doing work, which is, and now I can tell the chair now that the prize is out, who are doing much better work than I could ever do. <laughs> but what would I do without my family, and what would I be without my family? And I want to thank my mother who has always been the calm and steady center of my life, who comes to every one of my problems with a solution. 
I want to thank my loving father, who is not here today in body, but he must be here in spirit, and whose tie my beloved son is wearing to make sure that some part of my father is physically present today. I want to thank my other mother, my aunt Jocelyn, who was my first role model, and who first opened the possibility of a life that can be lived around art and books, and who has been unfailingly generous and supportive to me. There's a family I was born into, and there's the family I married into. And I want to tell Amitava and Romita, and Pinaki and Kumkum, my husband's siblings and their spouses, that I fell in love with them first. <laughs> and I married Arunava because I wanted to be part of your family. It's the best decision I ever made. They say that behind every successful man, there is a woman. And behind most successful women, there is a life unencumbered by any man. This is not true for me. I married well. And I want to acknowledge today what an example my husband, Arunava Sen, has been for me, showing me what a dedicated and ethical life in academics should look like. And of course, there's the greatest gift that we gave to each other, our wonderful son. Finally, I want to acknowledge Jawaharlal Nehru University. It's the institution where I have worked for 17 years, and which, until recently, was a very congenial and a very supportive place. We never had much money or facilities, but we had excellent colleagues, and we had academic freedom. Today, things are bad. Things are comically bad in my institutional home. How bad, you may ask? After I came to Bangalore, I checked my email and I found that the leave application I had put in to come here to receive this award had been rejected by my vice chancellor. <laughs> so please be warned that my presence on this stage today is illegitimate. But I am so very glad and so very deeply grateful to be here nonetheless. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart.